This is The Breakfast Stable. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast Stable. My name's Jack Muller and I'm joined again this morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning in Melbourne. If you're tuning in via Facebook Live, I'm here with the lovely Helen Riser, who is, as always, perky and fresh in the morning, unlike myself today. <laughs> it's a little bit... <laughs> a good morning. A uh, morning. I'm doing a Helen this morning. I'm channeling you this morning because um, I had a, um, I was out for dinner last night. So I'm a little bit... My car's a bit rusty this morning. Um, so <laughs> don't mind me if I sound a bit rough. Um, someone who's never rough, of course, is Catherine Zavazio. She's always... <laughs> Fresh as a daisy. Morning. <laughs> Good morning. Oh my god, my coffee in my in my Petey mug. Oh, that is Petey's mug. Hey, yeah, we got them for Mother's Day, didn't we? And um, somewhere in the ether is our darling Pete Hilkey. Come back. Where have you gone? He's decided to leave us. There he is. I was coming. actually watching some cooking. I was watching some cooking during the week. So um, there's a lot of cooking shows going on, isn't there, Pete? Oh, there are a lot of cooking shows out there at the moment. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? <laughs> Mate, you just went to get your coffee? No, it just literally, as soon as Helen went, three, two, one, go, it just dropped out. Oh. <laughs> we, we're glad you're back. We're glad you're back. Don't go anywhere, don't go anywhere. So, yeah, so we are having really our first week kind of out of isolation, really. And did it feel so different? I think it did, it, like being able to go to a cafe and seeing people sitting down and starting to sort of, it felt more normal again. Well, I think the traffic was in uh, full swing. Definitely. Oh, there was a lot more traffic for anyone who was out on the road. I got used to the empty roads. I quite enjoyed it. Me too. Them. <laughs> it was lovely. It's like a leisurely traffic, drive going to the office. It must admit the traffic this week for me, and I've been out a, quite a bit, has been absolutely dreadful. Especially yeah. up oh. Oh my God. Yes. Oh no. And I'm just so I'm grateful my... that restaurants and cafes are open again. And it's yes. been amazing. I went and had my first dinner at Saros Bar and Dining in Mooney Ponds, giving them a plug because they, they literally finished building their restaurant and the next day they had to shut down. So they hadn't even taken the plastic peeling off the furniture yet. Um, no, so right. congratulations to Saros for opening and Belinda Lee for getting it open. Um, we had our first ladies' lunch during the week, just very spaced out and very minimal, but it was the first time I've been out in 10 weeks yeah. to a oh, venue so at all in any format. Yeah, yeah. look, I mean, it's, it's been interesting um, just chatting with a lot, a lot of the owners of some of the restaurants this week. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be it's going to be a very, very long road, put it that way. Yeah, yeah. We're, but we've also got, coming back next week, football. So I think um, we're all going to be so happy to see the return of the AFL. And the NRL, I think, kicked off last night from memory. I think um, there was a game. Last at, last, yes. Um, but, yes, next week, I think the 11th, um, we've got um, our first AFL match, which is going to be so so thankful. We're going to have something else to watch apart from streaming services on the television. <laughs> oh, come on, what's wrong with the streaming services, Jack? I mean, really? <laughs> if I have to sit through another three episodes of Vampire Diaries, I'm going to <laughs> suck the life out of somebody order. else. Uh, oh, my gosh. Things you do to keep your kids happy. But we are here and we are pleased that um, you're joining us this morning on Facebook Live, so thanks for tuning in. Um, we've got a guest coming up in a little while too, haven't we, Helen? Uh, I was so excited uh, for Tamara um, and uh, she's going to transformational therapist. So she's going to be talking to us and giving a little insight about, because she's a numerologist and um, as well. So she's going to give us a little insight about our birth dates. Oh, that's going to be <laughs> Maybe we, we, don't have to, to, we don't have to do maths to because I'm, I'm rubbish, rubbish at maths. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so Pete, you've been out and about um, this week, as I said, um, being aware of some of the restaurants that are opening up now and I suppose being more at the coalface of what the reality of that is for a lot of them, haven't you? Yeah, look, I've been out there. It's, this is going to be a long, long, long road. Um, I think people, the social distancing, for example, in a restaurant that's got 40 seats, you're only going to be able to fit around about 10, maybe 15 people max in there. Um, and they've got to keep turning them over. 
Uh, it's been really, really fascinating to see. We went to uh, an Indian restaurant on Friday night. Mm. Uh, look, it was absolutely beautiful. But once again, through social distancing, um, there's so many new rules to adhere to. You know, you've got to put your name, name and number down so they can track you. Um, there will be some places that, you know, as they open, they'll be able to do temperature checks. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so there's all these little different nuances that will come through. It is going to change the way that we dine for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to say this. If you've ever been to um, Azad, he closed Azad this, this oh, week officially, yeah. which is yeah, such a shame. Mm. Yeah. But Tea Bazaar is actually going to be opening up a more casual dining <laughs> restaurant coming very soon, which is great. It's not the end of an empire, but it's a new beginning of something a little bit more casual. Mm. But the question yeah. is I've got for the three of you is this. Is this going to be part of the end for fine dining? I hope not. Yeah, I have one too. I mean, we all need somewhere to wear the good shoes, let's be honest. Um, I'm, I would question, well, how, how, do, how are the restaurants, because obviously a lot of them do um, trade off, they have a certain, you know, ambience to their restaurant. I mean, how is it? how are they going to create that, that sense of, you know, excitement or that really beautiful feeling that you get in some restaurants. For the smaller restaurants, I can see it'll be a little bit easier, like Cafe Kachin, which are quite small, intimate restaurants. So the fact that they've got people spaced out, it's probably not going to be a massive issue. But when you've got bigger restaurants, you know, and they've got people spaced out, how are they going to create that? Well, it's actually interesting you say that, Jack, because I was up at, uh, there's a beautiful restaurant up in Carton called Tiamo. was up there on oh, Monday. I love that. I love yeah. it. <laughs> They've got a beautiful wine bar on one side, the pizza shop on the other. But yeah. the actual wine bar, when we talk about a small venue, there's only six people allowed in there. Yeah. Mm. That's hard. And when you've got staff, so you've got a chef on, you've got your waiters, and then next door, you've got a 30-seat pizza restaurant that's only got 10 people in there. Mm. And so all up, 16 people. Look, um, when we talk about atmosphere, even on Friday night, we went to the Curry Vault. It's fascinating. There's, it's going to take a, a while for that warmth to come back in. Mm -hmm. you know, but you know what? I think Get they out. can certainly do a little bit with their furnishings and yeah. with their lighting, of course. That's in their styling. They can actually they can bring some ambiance back to the premises or into the premises if they didn't have it. I know there's some larger venues that cram them in like sardines as well, not mentioning any yeah, names, exactly. in the fine dining space. So I think it's about, you know, they all have to, mix it up a little bit and um, mm. change what they're doing slightly to fit the current restrictions and also to create that beautiful environment that people that love fine dining go out for. Mm. Well, it would be yeah. interesting. What's the idea of had maybe them putting dummies in seats? Maybe <laughs> <you're> pretty... <laughs> I I mean, know that's a bit novel. And it's fine for non-fine dining. It's yeah, okay. It's... <laughs> um, but I think, you know, that's a bit of a novel. I... It's a novelty really, isn't it? I'd find it creepy. I mean, it would be totally yeah. creepy. It would put me off my phone. Totally. I um I was um uh, I, I was also thinking because you know everyone's so paranoid and they want to feel safe and they want to know that you know I can just imagine in between seatings they spray Glen Twenty on the cushions and you know it's like well I think um, they do they do disinfect yeah. between sittings in mm. certain ways yeah. and yeah. I, um you mm. know I mean. Even that, like, do you really want to walk into a beautiful restaurant and, and smell leftover disinfectant and that sort of thing? So, I mean, there's a lot of things for them to think about. It's going to be a little bit tricky. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Scented way, candles. Uh, scented aroma just, baby just, candles, perhaps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a few weeks back, I spoke about Zomato. Yes. Um, during yes. The, and guess what? At the Curry Vault in Melbourne, the Zomato little tags on the table. You get your phone, oh, okay. you scan it, menu comes up. Good yeah, to see people are on it. It's awesome. Mm. That's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Petey. Thanks, Petey. Um, and Catherine, you've been obviously um, a, a constant champion of Australian um, businesses over the years, obviously having your own, and yeah. obviously trying to step up the whole campaign around everyone getting behind um, everything that's Australian made, isn't Absolutely. that right? Absolutely. In fact, during the week, uh, David Koch, he has a small business company and a media company, um, he launched the Small Business First initiative, which is where um, businesses can list their, their business for free and they can actually offer corporate and consumer uh, deals there. So um, I do advise if you've got a small business, hop onto that site. It's got a, a lot of 
um, fantastic you know, business advice and tax tips and um, productivity ideas and things like that. So um, that is smallbusinessfirst.koshisbusinessbuilders.com.au mm -hmm. and I've done a lot of work with Koshi over the years in Melbourne and in Sydney um, at different events and um, joined him on stage for a few things. So he's a real champion of small business and very, very passionate about what he does trying to support them. So any small business owners or if you know a small business owner, uh, do encourage them to hop onto that website and list their business for free. Uh, if you need yeah. details on that, you can actually get them from me on my LinkedIn. It's probably the easiest. It's quite a long uh, website name. Also, uh, on Facebook, there's an interesting page called Australian Made Products, and it's a group mm -hmm. by Australia's page, it's called. So that's on Facebook, and they have almost 1.7 million members in that group, which is incredible if you look at the population of Australia. So you can certainly see that lots and lots of people are looking for food and beverage Australian made items and, and other Australian made goods as well. So mm -hmm. I did a post on that page a couple of days ago, and I believe the, the page moderator told me they currently have about 28,000 posts waiting in a queue wow. to come live. So it is very, very popular. The post that I put up um, as of this morning, I think it had you know 1.3 or 1.4 thousand likes um, and 450 shares across not just Australia, but across the world by people that are on that page and are passionate about supporting Australian made goods. So that's mm. with my Aroma Baby product. Um, there's another one that I saw with, with um, Instagram, which is a wonderful one. That's up at about 10,000 followers right now. And that's called Truly Aussie Made. So on Instagram, Truly Aussie Made. Yep. Give that a follow and um, you know try and look at where you're buying your products from. Look at the labels and try and get, um, you know, I guess, the most important thing is that they're Australian made. If they can be Australian made and Australian owned goods and services, even better. Um, then there's, of course, the official Australian made campaign, which is an amazing directory of food, beverage, clothing, and lots and lots of different things. And we are a member of the Australian made campaign as well. And even there, you've got competitions, you've got children's resources like quizzes and jigsaw puzzles, um, recipes, and lots and lots of things. That's a membership-based um, portal. So, for example, if you've got a $5 million turnover as a business, the fee would be around 5000 k If you're a smaller business, then it's proportionate to the size of your business. So nice. I'm really encouraging everyone to get behind Australian-made, Australian-owned businesses. Um, and I just want to say one thing. Overnight, the um, WHO, World Health Organization, did um, release a comment about their view on the mandatory wearing of non-medical face masks. So they are recommending that fabric face masks do be <laughs> worn in public to help minimise the aerosolisation of the, um, you know, your breath and the droplets of COVID-19. So mm -hmm. we also have those at Aroma Baby. But look, just try and support Australian Made wherever you can, my yeah. advice. Please. No, but yeah, no, good, good, good advice. And no, no, I think genuinely everyone really wants to yeah. get behind helping businesses get back up and running very, very quickly. So, um, you know, great tips there and, and great resources too, Catherine. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Um, and someone who we know is going to be back up and running um, very shortly with all of her events now that everybody's allowed to come out to play is Helen Riser. <laughs> yes, good morning. Um, we've got a fabulous guest this morning and it's so good to, to be out and about, even though it's 20 people per venue. Um, but yes, uh, events will come up. It will be smaller, obviously, as of the 22nd of June, 50 people um, are allowed in venue spaces. So I'm going to get Tamara on uh, to chat to us about, well, almost our future, but what's going to be happening in June. <laughs> So today we've got the most incredible woman who I've had the pleasure of uh, meeting, not only meeting, but uh, being in one of your amazing workshops. Um, Tamara Wright, welcome. I am Thank going you. To, I'm going to do a little intro uh, because it's a long intro, uh, but because you just do so much and you help so many. Uh, but you're an incredible individual whose um, seminars, insight sessions and trainings have the power to change people's lives and turn businesses around. I've seen that firsthand. 
Uh, she's renowned for her outstanding results as a holistic life coach, a motivational trainer, a health and emotional eating expert, an intuitive insight consultant, an anti-aging advisor, a relationship Ooh. coach. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't believe in aging. <laughs> And um, a motivational speaker, of course. Um, you've consulted many incredibly talented and notable people across diverse backgrounds and achievements in music and television, sport, business and politics. Um, and you've improved people's lives and helped so many to cope with life's challenges uh, by getting them back on track, particularly these days. And you can find Tamara Wright on www.tamara.com as well as Facebook, Tamara Antonio hyphen right, and Instagram at Tamara Inc. So welcome Tamara, how are you? Thank you, Helen, <laughs> great, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, we're good. good. Hi everybody. Hi. Hi Tamara, thanks for joining Hi. us. So Hi, Tamara. no, thank you. Um, yep. I mean, we've, we've each, I mean, we've all got questions for you and there's so much we want to know. Um, I know I gave you our birth date. So, I mean, shall we start with, shall we start with that? Absolutely. It's like each individual um, has their own vibration. And as I explain to people, when I look at people, I look at them as being vehicles and the vehicle has an energy and the energy inside the vehicle is the energy of the soul. So the soul comes onto the planet, into the vehicle. So we're actually doing our soul's journey. And that's, what's, that's what it's basically all about. So we've got to learn to actually step aside, get rid of all of the negativity that is stopping that expression coming through. So it's like with, um, with Pete and also with Jack, the both of you have exactly the same vibration for this particular year. Wow. So Pete started in, in, um, in uh, March and Jack, you started in your September of last year. And this is all about breaking free. This is about I'm wanting to get out. I'm wanting to be around a whole lot of new people. The month energy for the both of you personally for June is a month vibration of endings. So getting very clear about everything that you no longer want in your life and doing something about clearing the way. With Helen and Catherine, I mean, this is just like amazing. <laughs> the both of you, the both of you are in exactly the same year vibration as well. Um, Helen, you started yours in August of last year. Catherine, you're pick, you picked it up in March of this year. And this energy is all about business. It's about money. It's about where you're living and it's about how you're living. So getting very clear about that. And June for the both of you is a month of freedom, change, variety, travel, movement, people, fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, oh, that's good that. to me. <laughs> so it's like, it's just, and it's like, and by being, by being clear at that subconscious level, then what happens is that you leave yourself open for the universe to bring everything into you. Mm. But if you're mm. not clear at that subconscious level, you're, you'll actually create blocks and which then leads to a whole lot of frustration. So then by looking at what's going on now and what has been going on, the, the most important thing I'm saying to people in regard to our way out is get rid of fear. Fear is the worst, worst that you can actually be functioning with at this particular point in time. So I've been supporting a lot of people, fear of financial scarcity, fear to do with fear of the future, fear of the unknown, all of that energy has created a lot of problems for people. Um, being in present time, very important. Taking total responsibility. By taking responsibility, you can then change things. If you don't take responsibility, you then become a victim to circumstance. Mm. So, and then we've also got the energy of like creating a lot of change because it is the year vibration to do with transformation, transformation, transformation that I said in January. And of course, this year has actually shown that, you know, very, very strongly and will continue to show that. 
So again, it's like it's the death of the old, the birth of the new, the death of the old, the birth of the new, the death of the old, the birth of the new. Now, because of um, the energy of COVID, we've got to look at our health. Our health is number one priority. Immune system, number one priority going forward. What lowers your immunity? Stress lowers your immunity. What else do we have around that? Um, that we have negative emotions. Any negative emotion, it's like, is going to lower the immune system. Alcohol, smoking, all drugs, processed food, fried food, sugar, being overweight. So it needs to be our number one priority to get in and to make sure that we are eating healthy foods, make sure our immunity is up. So we've got, to, we've got to make sure that we've got our gut is functioning properly. So we've got to get our probiotics happening, yeah? And by doing that, the probiotics in the gut is then going to support with the immune system, yeah? Like, yep. very important. People, okay, uh, Tamara, questions. can I just say, people say that the gut is almost like the second brain, isn't it? It is. Absolutely mm -hmm. it is. And do you know what it's like? It's stronger than the brain. Mm -hmm. Well, I know when I'm really hungry at three o'clock in the afternoon, it seems to be stronger than my gut certainly <laughs> seems to be stronger than my brain. Okay, so three o'clock in the afternoon, we're talking about your adrenals. Mm -hmm. So there's some really good supplements out there to do with um, building up your adrenals and strengthening your adrenals. So I take two adrenal support at 10 o'clock in the morning and two at three in the afternoon. And if I'm presenting a seminar, they're just there all the time. So every break I go up and I pop one of the adrenal supports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. And so how have you I found... Um, oh, sorry, with, with, yeah. sorry, no, sorry. Um, yeah, just people, obviously, you know, you're starting to meet with clients. Have you been doing more of that? Obviously, you've been doing Zoom meetings with clients. Oh, have you found Jack, that... It's like, it's been, it's been like, like... I'd have to say a bit of a nightmare um, <laughs> through it because it's like I've been on like Skype to clients all over the world. It's like all having meltdowns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been suicidal. Um, yeah. The domestic violence has gone like through the roof. Mm. So like working with, you know, working with couples, working with guys, like in regard to that. Um, supporting the mums in regard to getting the kids out of the home, out of the environment as much as possible. Yeah. So it's like, okay, we're going off and we're going to be doing some exercise, yeah? Because I tend to find that it's like the, the guys find it very, very difficult to actually step forward and say, hey, I need help, I need support here. Um, but, but what they find with me is that it's like the work is, that I do is totally confidential and it's like, and those, the guys or anyone that does um, domestic violence, it's like there's a lot of unresolved issues that are there from childhood that need to be dealt with, yeah? Yes. Guys yes. at the moment are having meltdowns because it's like, I can't afford, I can't afford to pay this, I can't afford to pay that. And this is where I've looked at a lot of people living beyond their means. It's like, you know, you don't need the big house, you don't need the big car if it's going to put you into a whole lot of debt. Because if things like this happen, there's no money behind you. All you're doing is working paycheck to paycheck. And it's like, and you're in a really, really like difficult situation. So I've actually supported some people financially during this period of time because they've needed that help and your kids can't go hungry. Hey Mara, I was just going to say before, and just on the, on the topic of, you know, bringing your childhood baggage, if you like, into future relationships. Uh, all of us have been through separation here as a team um, in, in our private lives. And I'm wondering, you know, with people actually moving on into new relationships, how can you give us some tips around maybe healing some of that hurt? There's a lot of people you see that tend to go from one relationship to the next, to the next, to the next, and they don't actually have a lot of time on their own to actually just be present and, and work on themselves and heal. So I wonder yeah. if you've got some advice and some tips yeah. uh, for, for all question. of us. And, yeah, and obviously right. um, for, for other people that, that are joining us on the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, look, I started doing the Born to be Free seminar 29 years ago. Mm. And that was all about, that was to do with my journey. So for me, it's like I had like lack of confidence, low self-esteem, fear of saying no, need to be liked, fear of financial scarcity. Like, you know, I had the whole kit and caboodle. Um, so it was doing the journey to get rid of all of that. And I didn't realize exactly what was going on until around about the age of 37. Um, and my last divorce was 40. I've been married three times. 
Okay. And, and and what I say to individuals is it's like you, you have to go back and you have to transform all of your negative um, subconscious patterning that comes in from that early childhood because the birth to the age of 10 is when all of that forms. And from birth to the age of five, we have no conscious logic. So we actually absorb everything on an emotional level. Six to the age of 10, the conscious logic starts to happen. Yeah. So we have all of, if we have all of that unresolved inside of us as an adult, what we're going to do, we actually attract in what it is that we need to heal. So we go from the same relationship. So I say to people, I married the same man three times. Yeah. Did I marry the same, you know, no, yeah. no, I married the same personality type of men who were persecutors. That then goes back to my childhood where I had parents who were both of them were persecutors. Yeah. So it was what my subconscious mind knew. So, and when I did that work, then I stopped attracting in the persecutors, but I started a program called Also Heal Your Heart because I was finding that doing Born to be Free was really great, but then people still had like unresolved emotional pain that they were carrying. I thought, yeah. right, okay, I need to get in. We need to work with that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you bleed all, I say to people, the wounds that you receive from your past relationships, if you don't heal them, you're going to bleed all over people that come into your life from that point on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny so too that when you, when you might be in a new relationship or you date someone new and they and they appear to be completely different to your past husband or your past partner um, mm. and then it's only in hindsight perhaps when it doesn't work out that you look back and you can see the patterns that, that yeah. although they might be a different personality or in a different industry or uh, a different chemistry but actually mm. the the basis of the pattern is still there and they actually are really similar and you're choosing the same sort of partners all yeah. the time so yeah. it is What's really it? interesting yeah, I think it's interesting. It's like I say to people, you know, it's not necessarily don't beat yourself up because it's not it's not necessarily you choosing. It's it's your subconscious dynamic that holds a power of ninety percent that keeps on attracting them in. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So when yeah, you really transform yeah. yeah, when you transform that at a subconscious level, then life totally changes. Yeah. Mm. And I say to people, my last divorce was at forty and I've never married again. And the men that I've had in my life have been like very, very different to those prior to that last divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And their need to be in a relationship is no longer there because I've transformed that from a subconscious level. The fear of being on my own, I transformed that. So therefore it's like, I'm okay being on my own. So therefore the relationships that I have are not based on any form of need. Because I've got the weird. same not need to be in a relationship too now. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's amazing. Yeah. It's because like, as I also uh, so, teach, I feel, it's I feel so knows. free and yeah, it's just, yeah. I'm so fine just being by yeah. myself. And, 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 and by yeah, being in great. that space, you leave yourself open to like attracting in someone. There's a friend of Helen's and myself. Um, and she said the other day, you know, she said, I'm fine. Like she did some, one-on-one -on -one work with me in regard to transforming everything that she'd been carrying from her ex, uh, ex-husband who she'd been married to for 30 years. And she said, yeah. I'm fine. I'm great. I'm happy. Don't want to date. I'm, you know, she said, whereas I had that high need after divorcing to be in another relationship because I'd never known life without a man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so she's off work walking her dog the other day. And she said, Oh my God, she said this gorgeous guy looked at me and smiled and she said no I was picking up dog poo you know <laughs> and she, she said I just went oh that's nice and she said so I kept on my walk and when I turned around she said lo and behold she said yeah. he was walking back we've exchanged phone numbers and yeah so when it's meant to happen it yeah. happens when We've you're got another in... girlfriend who met so met somebody in the supermarket, haven't we, Helen? That's it. Yes, we That's it. But for me, you know what, Tamara, I go from home to work to home to work, so no one's going to meet me, and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, but you, but another thing, you, another thing is that you go, yeah, home to work, but then you may go to a coffee shop or out to a restaurant with friends, and boom, there's somebody who's going to wow. strike up a conversation with you. Yes. Mm. How um how, just really quickly, Tamara, how long do you can you see someone 
go, how long can someone go through that process of transformation? I mean, obviously everyone's very different, everyone's circumstances are very different, but, you know, can someone see a change in their life if they really wanted to commit to that within a matter of, say, weeks or, you know, do you sort of set expectations with people that it could take, you know, months and years? I mean, obviously it's an ongoing thing. No, 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 no. Look, I, I started doing, as I said, started doing Born to Be Free 29 years ago. And with that program, people see change immediately, immediately. So with like I've studied and I thought, right, if I'm going to be working with people, I need to get a lot of qualifications because mm. people's lives the are behind extremely... Us. I was going to say, <laughs> as evidenced by the, your background. <laughs> um, so like, you know, like you've got, you've got, individuals and their subconscious minds are so very very powerful so you know i say to people i don't heal you you heal you I have however to say, oh i was just going to say i did tamara's workshop and i felt instantly the minute i left and i remember ringing up tamara i think it was the following morning i went into my car and i know this sounds a bit creepy and after chatting to the girls after your workshop, and it was that night, and I thought, because I'd cried in your workshop because it was so powerful, and um, I pulled down my um, mirror and my mother, I saw my mother. Me, it was me, but I saw my yeah. mother. And it was yeah. like, and she was smiling at me, and I just, I freaked out because I'd never seen my mother before, and she'd been, she passed away 10 years ago. So yeah. it was, that's how powerful I felt. But that was my own experience. Mm, and, experience. Yeah. and every yeah. day from that, I, it, it just, I could feel the transformation of the way I think, yeah. the way I see things, the way I handle situations and everything mm. from compromising situations to conflict to every single thing. It's completely... Allowing yourself to be used. <laughs> <laughs> But because isn't you're our, too, our, our because you know, is too generous. Thing. Yep, too generous to the wrong people. Yes. yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, definitely. Mm. That's, that's been amazing. I, I look, that's just such a fascinating um, viewpoint on our old Tamara. I mean, I've certainly got a lot out of that. And obviously, Pete and I, we're often, we, we've got to get, what have we got the I'm same, vi no, we've got the same vibrator. What have we got? We've got the same in, vibrator. You're, you're, in, you're, in, you're, in the year, you're in the year of a lot of change, you know, but mm. it's like I'm wanting a whole lot of new people around me. But also with the both of you, what you're spending. Okay. What, cool. you're, spending, what you're spending through until your next birthday. Okay. Roger. That's yep. a bit late. We've been doing so much online shopping of recent times. But, um, and Helen and I, we can just go out and be free and play together and just... Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, and the thing, is, the, thing is, the thing is, is that with your, with the year vibration with Helen and Catherine, it's like, Helen, you go into the year in the, in the August, but Catherine, you don't pick up that personal energy until the March. So you're like a little bit out of kilter yeah. from the August to the March, but then from the March to the August of that following year, you both are totally aligned, totally aligned. Yay. Well, yeah, it's like it's exciting. <laughs> we've, had a, yeah. we've had a lot of closeness. I mean, we've been friends for a very long time, but we've had a lot of closeness, different sort of closeness in the last six months, let's yeah, say. So it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're, 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 your, own, your own personal energy, Catherine, is the same energy vibration as Helen's destiny. So, oh. yeah, so that works really, really well together. That's so lovely. with your work energy, that supports her destiny. And when she's doing her destiny, that supports you with your natural talent. Oh, wow. lovely. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Tamara, for joining us on the show You're this welcome. morning. Thank you, Helen, for, for, you. for bringing her in on, on this weekend show. Thank and we really much. appreciate everybody joining and tuning in this week on The Breakfast Table. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, thank, thank you, you Petey and, um, thank you, and Helen as well and Tamara. Thank you. And we will be in touch. Tune in on Facebook um, for updates about The Breakfast Table. And um, have a great Sunday, everyone. Happy Thanks Sunday. Thanks for joining us. Thank Bye. you. Have a great time. Bye. Thanks, guys. Loved Bye. it.